What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name's Gym Leader Geo, and this is week three of season eight of the GBA. The San Francisco Giants are going up against Crimson Seabat, aka Chase, and the Detroit Steel Wings. Now, uh, as I mentioned in the team builder before, uh, Chase and I have. Uh, been rivals in the past. We've both been in the GBA together since season four. Uh, he took a brief uh, pause for a couple of seasons, but he is back and he is stronger than ever. He is a division rival and uh, we really need this win against him to kind of turn around our uh, lackluster start to the season, uh, given that we had a couple of early battles outright and... Uh, sort of put us off on the bad foot. So uh, if you guys are interested in the team I brought, go check out the locker room, which is the video that went up immediately prior to this on my channel. So first thing you're gonna be wondering is, what's going on here? Is this a post com? And the answer is yes. Uh, I'm gonna be splicing in images and uh, talk a little bit about the live com um, and my reactions and all that. But the reason it's not a live com is because uh, I went to a LAN party the weekend prior to having this battle and at that LAN party, that meant I had to unplug all my things. I didn't bring my mic with me. When I came back, plugged my mic in. It didn't default to the recording thing uh, that I had for this video. Or it's either that or uh, the OBS when I updated OBS. Um, after that, it didn't choose it as the correct default. So I had no sound input. So there's no sound on the video. And <laughs> uh, so I have to, I have to post comment. Uh, but there's a lot of reactions that I have in the video that I'm going to probably splice in because I really do feel uh, that that's the the true nature of what to watch in this battle. So uh, we got the battle up here. Uh, we're going to click play and we're just going to kind of narrate it through the way uh, all these post commers do. Uh, and I don't have a ton of post com experience. I've done it once or twice before when videos have been ruined <laughs> in the past. So we'll try it again here. So looking at my matchup, um, it was literally the top six Pokemon that I predicted. If you look back at the locker room video, these are the top six, the top two rows. So I predicted this team 100%. He gets a Kuroguri lead and I lead with the safe uh, Tefiti, my Shaman. Uh, looking at this matchup, uh, I don't know if he knows that I'm offensive or not. Uh, I go straight away for the Seed Flare and with my uh, high offensive investment, and my life orb, it does a lot of damage. He gets a baby knockoff on me uh, and pops off the life orb and I'm feeling really good at this point. So uh, I predict a switch here. Uh, and then what he does is he goes out of Kirigiri into real steel. My prediction was spot on and I pop him with an earth power. Uh, he does have a berry for it, uh, which was, was good prep on his part. And as I'm kind of looking at the damage, sort of in my head, I'm thinking, um, let's make a prediction here that he'll switch again. And I pop off the seed flare, but unfortunately I miss, which is really, really, really unfortunate. Uh, he gets a U-turn off on me, does a good amount of damage, and he goes into Endeavor, which is his Infernape. So obviously I'd be dumb to stay in here because I don't know it's set yet if it's scarfed then it might just pop off a u-turn super effective against me will probably kill me I instead go into Toxapex to try and wall it so he's gonna click the u-turn as anticipated the nice safe u-turn I'm gonna get some rocky helmet damage off on him and actually do more damage to him than he does to me but he does have the momentum now so he's gonna go into charge bolt um, which a very safe and calculated switch on his part I of course cannot stay in here but he actually makes a hard double into real steel so here's the thing i didn't predict the switch per se but um i knew that dig dug would be a safe switch no matter what here and i really want him to be the one that tanks the attack from uh the charge bolt uh, because of the set that i opted to run so i pop off an earthquake here and if that seed flare had gone through i would have killed this thing instead he gets a healing wish off uh, and he's going to pass that to Kirogiri. So first death is uh, the Jirachi taking its own life and going out. We're now 6-5. Uh, Kirogiri comes in, gets that full heal. He's too bulky for Doug Trio. So obviously looking at this situation, I know I need to switch. But what I also anticipate, don't know, is that he probably won't have much for the shaman so i make a switch into shaman here knowing that i'm natural cure rest as my set and that i will outspeed this i i figure i can take a hit he goes for the shadow ball 
and as anticipated, I do take the hit well. So I'm going to outspeed him here. I'm going to go for the rest, uh, anticipating he's probably just going to try and do something. Maybe he's a setup, like Toxic Spike setup. Maybe he's Nasty Plot. I'm not really sure. I'm not too scared of it at this point in time. So I, I pop off the rest. He's just going to go for another Shadow Ball safe click for on his part. Uh, it does some damage, but not a lot. I'm actually in really good place here. I'm going to hard switch here. Uh, and I go into DMX uh, just to tank this hit and figure that I can start setting up a couple of hazards of my own um, because uh, I'd really like to get Toxic Spikes up knowing that the Don Fan might be able to Rapid Spin them away but we'll get Toxic or Poison in the process. So I get one set up here. He's going to opt to go for the Will-O-Wisp uh, and burn me which is fine, a little chip damage, but I didn't feel that this was the best play um, because of how effective Regenerator it is and not really worrying too much about chip. So now looking at this situation, I'm going to switch out because I never want to stay in too long with DMX uh, to a position where I might bait in the Charge Bolt. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. So he does go Charge Bolt here as I switch into uh, Shaman. Now, he doesn't know that I have coverage for him, but I also want to scout and see if he has coverage for me. So I'm going to go hard into Dig Dug, which is, uh, like I said in the locker room, going to be my play pretty much whenever I see this. And he has the sub, which is the set, uh, a set that I anticipated he would have. I, of course, need to break this. I'm going to go for the Rock Tomb. Uh, now, at this point in the video, I had a huge... I need to kind of pause here and talk about this. So he does pop the Substitute, um, and then he's going to pop off a Hidden Power and uh, it takes me down to very low and we see that it's super effective. So I'm pausing here so that I can kind of talk this through a little bit. Knowing my Dig Dug set, I knew I could take whatever he had there because I still had my Focus Sash intact and he didn't have any Stealth Rocks up. So I'm in this position. I know I outspeed him. Um, I know that he has Substitute, could potentially set up another one or something like that. I could get a little damage on him and chip him down slow him down a little bit with the um, the Rock Tomb, but the Rock Tomb is not going to come anywhere near killing him. I did the calc, it, it's not going to kill him, so he will be up and he will be fine and be able to come back in later or anything like that. I prioritized at this point in time getting up rocks, and the reason I did that was whatever happens here, I didn't anticipate that he was going to want to stay in with Charge Bolt much longer. I knew that I had Shaman, who was a decent check to this, especially knowing now that he his hidden power is super effective against Doug Trio. Um, I was thinking it's hidden power ice, and that it probably wouldn't be able to do much to the Shaman, and that I should be able to take this thing on 1v1. So, um, I had been criticized about not using the rocks last week. I know that it could help a lot in the longevity of this game if he's going to start switching out Charge Bolt a lot. And I don't know enough about his set to know where else he's going to go with it. So uh, I opt to click Stealth Rocks here over the um, getting the damage off on him as he's going to choose to take me out with a second Hidden Power. So looking at this scenario as we see it now, um, I know that I am, and Dougie dies, so let me click that off. Doug Trio dead. Shaman comes in, knowing that I can probably tank a hit that he's going to go for. He's actually going to click Nasty Plot. Now, I had the coverage for it. I wasn't going to overpredict here, so I did actually end up clicking the Hidden Power. He uh, lives the Hidden Power. Um, I kind of anticipated he would, and unfortunately at this point, because I don't really know his fourth move... Uh, and I'm not positive that he's Z move or whatever. I opted to stay in, uh, and he's gonna pop off the Gigavolt Havoc. Um, so we're gonna have a nice picture here, but I'm gonna pause it first to kind of talk a little bit more about this. Here is my thought process here. Looking at the team as I have remaining, Blacephalon, Mew, Toxapex, Haxorus. Uh, after I saw that he lived my Hidden Power Rock and, or, or Ice, and he, um, Pops, hits up the nasty plot. I'm anticipating I'm going to die to the hidden power ice anyway, but and and it would be stupid for him to not have another move. But I don't know enough about his set to really know that it's safe for me to sack any other mons. I'm looking at this game and I'm thinking I might need the DMX uh, as a safe switch in, as a pivot switch in. It is so safe against the Kuragiri if he sits on his bulky mons. Um, generally speaking, I can win against those 1v1 with the Toxapex. It's a good switch into the Infernape. I don't want to put myself in a position where Infernape can set up and sweep me later on, uh, since he knows that I don't have the Ditto. So, 
I was worried about allowing this setup to get out of hand and sacking the Toxapex would have been a mistake in that regard. Uh, especially because I, I, I just didn't know where he could go with this. So I opted to stay in thinking maybe something... Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what I thought would happen, but I anticipated that if I'm going to sack something, I think it needs to be the Shaman. I do have ways of breaking down the other things that Shaman would be good against, like the Suicune and the Donphan. So I stay in and Shaman goes down, but he did a lot of work um, before that. I opt to go Head Go Boom here because Head Go Boom is Scarfed and will outspeed him, and at the amount of HP remaining, I could um, pick up some damage, and I would love the free hit on a Suicune. So I was anticipating Suicune to be a physical set. I pop off the Shadow Ball here. Uh, he does have a poison. I'm very happy about this. I don't know what set he is yet, uh, but I love, I relish the opportunity for a little chip against this guy. So I pop off the Shadow Ball and see that he's very specially defensive. So he clearly uh, brought this set to uh, help against the Blacephalon. So obviously I'm not going to stay in here and risk losing it. Uh, I'm going to go into Home Yowner, who doesn't really fear anything that this guy has for me. Uh, he's going to pop off a Scald right away. Now, looking at this, uh, he doesn't get the burn. I get my lefties, and I figure I can start setting up if I get a couple of Calm Minds here. Backdraft obviously is very weakened. He doesn't know what set I am. He might fear the Volt Switch or something like that. I'm going to go right away for the Calm Mind here. And the reason for that is I know Kirigiri is in the back. And if I get a couple of these up, uh, Kirigiri can't actually break my sub. Uh, I'm sorry, before I go for the Calm Mind, I go for sub. I go for sub first. Um, now, at two, at plus two, he can no longer break a sub. So I'm going to get to plus one. I know it will break my sub. I'm going to get to plus two. I know he'll do more damage than my sub can hold or he'll do less damage than my sub can hold to me, I'll have enough HP to get another sub off, then roost, and hopefully I'm away to the races at this point. That's my thought process going forward with all of these turns um, at that point in time. So, um, I get the first one off, he goes for the Shadow Ball. The Shadow Ball will break my sub until I'm at plus two. So, my next move, after I get to the plus one, plus one, this turn, I'm going to go for the plus two, plus two, I'm going to pray there's no crit, and then I'm uh, looking to either go for a roost or a sub, and um, kind of based on what I'm looking at in front of me. We know Kirigiri is poisoned, we know he's getting chipped, uh, and we know that his only reliable recovery that he can pop off is a pain split. We've seen Shadow Ball, we've seen Knock Off. Um, and I think we've seen Will-O-Wisp. Uh, he's actually going to reveal fourth move, Haze. Uh, and that sucks a lot. I, I wasn't anticipating the Haze. Uh, so now, unfortunately, after all that, uh, we're back down to zero. And of course, I, I can't stay in at this point because the Shadow Ball will do about 40% to me. So I know I have to switch. Um, just as like a safe pivot play, I'm actually going to go into Toxapex here first. Just because I know that I can tank hits from this guy. I'm not really worried about what he might have for me. Uh, and he's just getting whittled in the process. So uh, I take that fine. Of course, I do get the special D drop here. But I I'm not worried because nothing on his team truly worries me for the DMX except for Charge Bolt. And Charge Bolt is hurt. And I have Stealth Rocks up. Um, and at this point in the game, I didn't memorize exactly how much HP he had left, but I'm pretty sure he would come very close to dying at this point. He makes the safe switch into backdraft, um, as I just go for, uh, chip and whittle damage. I didn't want to give the, uh, uh, free switch into the charge bolt, so I went for the scald thinking if he does try and come in here, I will kill him. After that scald damage and the poison damage, this thing is basically dead. I know for a fact there's no way people run Suicune without rest, so I predict the rest here. Uh, so I'm going to hard switch into Toys R Us, because my thought is he's going to click rest, uh, even if he rest, if he's rest talk set. He could be rest at Chesto. Uh, no, I've seen lefties at this point, so I know he's not rest at Chesto. Um, I think. No, I can't remember, actually. <laughs> um, this is a very important part. Actually, that I should uh, I should mention. I don't know what this guy's item is, uh, and I kind of maybe it was an issue I should have been paying more attention to early on in the game. It's possible he didn't he wasn't holding an item, but I really didn't know at this point in the game. Uh, just a uh, little knowledge for you guys uh, to keep that heads up. So he does pop off the rest as anticipated, 
And now I'm in against this guy. We know he's specially defensive, so we know he's not going to take Toys R Us well. I figure if I get one Dragon Dance up, I can potentially sweep here because I should be able to outspeed everything uh, and really put myself in a very good position. So he goes for the uh, Sleep Talk here. I know that I can tank an Ice Beam or a Scald. We haven't seen fourth move. Uh, he actually gets the rest, so I'm, I feel like I'm in a great place. I click Outrage here, uh, knowing that it won't kill, but it'll two-hit KO. We see that he's so much less defensive than I thought. I thought maybe mixed defenses or something. Uh, he pops off the Sleep Talk here, and it gets Roar. And I'm like, oh my god, this set. So he's Roar, Scald, Rest, Sleep Talk. Uh, and he pulls me to DMX the one Pokemon that wouldn't kill him at the remaining HP that this Pokemon has. The one Pokemon. So, of course, I have to hard switch here. I go back into Toys R Us, assuming he's going to click Rest because he's not ready to lose this, and I'm in on DMX. There's no way he's going to attack me. Uh, he could roar again, but whatever. So, he does click the Rest again. And so, I'm in the same position I was in. I'm a little worried that uh, I won't get lucky this time and that he'll uh, Rest into Scald, potentially burn me. Uh, so he's actually going to switch here and go into Cementos. I know based on the damage I did last time that I can two hit KO this guy with Outrage. Um, the Suicune that is. So I just clicked Outrage here just, just to go. So the Outrage does a lot of damage to the Cementos. Uh, so I'm thinking it wasn't fully defensive or the very least it just couldn't hang. At least after the poison damage. So even with his lefties I know that one more Outrage. So I'm crossing my fingers here. I'm like... Uh, he pops off an Ice Shard, it'll do some damage to me, uh, okay amount. I pop off the second Outrage and I'm like, please confuse me so I can switch out here. Please confuse me so I can switch out here. Unfortunately, luck is not on my side this time and I get locked into it again and Endeavor, his, um, uh, his Infernape comes in. I'm locked into Outrage, I'm like, great, so I have to eat a close combat from this thing, but wouldn't you know it, my HP investment kicks in, I live on 8, and I pop off my last Outrage, and I knock this guy down. So, I should have been clicking this through, but Don Fan is now dead. And, uh, in addition to the Don Fan being dead, we also have Infernape, who is dead. So, I'm feeling very good at this point. Uh, he comes in with Suicune. It's 4-3. I have the advantage, and uh, but I am at 8, and I'm confused, and there's no way I'm risking this. Uh, so I'm going to switch into Home Yowner, thinking maybe I can kind of set up against this thing, weaken it a little bit. Uh, I'm not too scared. I do have Roost on this. He doesn't really have anything for me. Scald's not going to hurt me. Uh, he's going to Rest Talk into Roar, and that's going to bring in uh, my uh, Toxapex. So... We're head to head on this. Here's the situation I know. He needs to be weakened and he needs to click rest and I need to predict it on that turn and go into, um, go into Haxorus if I want a chance at killing this thing. That's my only option. Another thing I know is he's still got Kiragiri in the back can't do a lot to me. He's got Charge Bolt, can do a lot to me. I think there's a chance it dies to rocks. I don't remember its exact HP at this point. So he's gonna just, we're just gonna exchange Scalds here. And I'm telling you right now, guys, just as a little bit of a heads up, uh, I'm gonna start fast forwarding this soon because this situation exists for a long time. Um, we are at a low turn count here. And there's just so much of this here. Uh, he, I'm burnt, he's scalding me, I'm scalding him, I'm not getting burnt. I was really unlucky this game, I will say that. Incredibly unlucky. Uh, with how many times I wanted something to happen my way and it did not. Very unlucky. He pops off the rest here. I didn't quite anticipate this would be the turn he chose to do it. But uh, he might be thinking along the lines of, he never wants to give me the switch into um, Haxorus on the turn um, that he rests. So, DMX is getting a little low here, I don't super care, but knowing that he's asleep, um, and knowing that I do need to whittle him a little bit to put him in a safe position, I, I just stay in. He sleep talk roars me, and so I get roared out, and this time I get brought into um, Blacephalon. 
Obviously, I can't risk the... Um, I can't necessarily risk the Scald, but what I can do is trick him, but I fail the trick, and this is why I mentioned the item earlier. I I guess I wasn't paying enough attention early to see if it didn't have an item or, or something. I don't know what the situation was, but fortunately, he, uh, he Sleep Talk roars me into Mew. I'm thinking, okay, this guy's about to wake up. He can possibly go for... Uh, maybe a Scald on me, maybe he just roars me. Uh, I'm gonna opt to take a Psy Shock against him, and uh, it does a little bit of damage. He wakes up, he roars me, and uh, brings me out uh, once again into Head Go Boom. Now, obviously, I know the trick didn't work last time. I know the HP remaining, uh, that I can't risk this, so I have to switch out. I go into DMX as my safe switch. And I need to put him in a position again where he will rest and sleep talk and I just want to tank his scalds and, and be okay with it. At this point in the game, the, there's so many turns, right? And I'm making my turns pretty quickly. You might notice this has been a lot of turns already. Uh, I'm making quick turns here because I'm trying so hard to not have this timeout. But I'm thinking in my head constantly, I, I don't want to win 4-3. I easily can. I easily can. As long as I don't give his Charge Bolt an opportunity to get in safely. So I'm throwing out Scalds uh, to the extent that he's not going to feel confident and safe being able to switch in. I pop a Recover off here just to make sure he doesn't um, catch me at a bad time or anything like that. So DMX is healthy. He, We've got a tiny bit of Chip and Whittle against Backdraft. I just want Backdraft in a position where either Mew can kind of deal with him um, put him in range of Haxorus killing with an Outrage, and then I'll sack something and maybe move on from there. That's my thought. I'm, I'm, my mind is moving a million mines, uh, miles a minute trying to figure out how can I break this because I don't want this game to end on timer because people will blame me even though he refuses to switch out the Suicune. I guarantee the blame is coming on me. Uh, I have to go for Toxic Spikes here. It didn't really matter. I'm kind of burning turns. I figure if he does opt to switch into Kirigiri and then come back in with Backdraft, uh, the Toxic might be more beneficial than regular Poison to ramp up at an inconvenient rate uh, to put uh, Resting at a bad place for him. So I get off another Scald and I finally get the burn after like 10 Scalds. Now remember, he's pressure. So I'm running low on Scalds here. I know that and I know I need to have at least one otherwise Charge Bolt, if it does live, rocks will give me a problem. I switch into Home Yowner here thinking, okay, he either rests now or next turn and I'll just tank something. He does choose to rest now. Here's what I'm thinking. I, this is, I'm like, okay, this is good. I needed this. I couldn't risk going into Haxorus because that's the only way to break it. But what I want to do is weaken it to the point that I can kill it with Outrage. Just like click Outrage and it dies. So I need to chip away at it. So what I'm going to do is go for Psy Shock here. I figure like Psy Shock, Psy Shock might like kind of bring it down. I get a crit and now my mind's thinking, okay, I've given him one turn of Rest Talk. Uh, he Sleep Talks here. I know he gets another turn of this. He pops Scald. I'm like, this is great. This is exactly what I need. And now here's my thought. I could Psy Shock. It probably won't, without a crit, put him in range of dying to the Outrage. I can force the Roar here if I go Calm Mind, and if he doesn't get the Roar into Haxorus on me as he wakes up. So I know he has one more turn of Sleep Talk. Uh, he might not get the Roar, and if he doesn't, I'm in good position to Psy Shock him next turn, force the Roar, but unfortunately he gets the Roar. The what I just, I really needed, it was a 1 in 3 chance, I really needed no Roar. Um, he's gonna wake up next turn, he's gonna definitely click Scald because it will kill Toys R Us, and so unfortunately I need to end this and go back into DMX and put the position, uh, put myself in the same position again, try and do that once again. So. He pops off the Scald, um, can I, <laughs> can I up the speed here, you guys are gonna kinda see this in the background, uh, I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to up the speed, so I guess I'm not gonna do that, we're just gonna kinda talk it through some more. So he's gonna switch to Kirigiri here, which was interesting, um, I'm just clicking Scalds, cause I still got some of them left, and, you know, that switch could've been anything, that could've been the switch into Charge Bolt that he sacks that. Uh, I know Kirigiri's four moves, uh, he doesn't particularly scare me, 
Uh, maybe he was anticipating me to hard switch into Mew because he's seen that my plan recently has been to try and Mew in against his uh, guy. I'm just going to recover up, kind of see what he's going to go for here. Uh, he's just going to Shadow Ball. Um, maybe he predicted a Mew switch again. I'm not 100% sure. He does get the special D drop, but he's poisoned and kind of low health. And he's not doing that much to me. And I don't mind tanking all these hits. So I figure I can potentially kill this guy. Uh, so on this turn, he's going to withdraw. And I'm like, oh, please be chargeable. It's backdraft again. Uh, here we are with an awake backdraft with a, some HP. But now he's toxic poisoned. And at about 50% HP. Right? So, so I get another Scald off here. And I'm thinking, this could be the situation I need to repeat the process that I had mentioned before, where I need to, on a turn that he rests, get in um, on my Haxorus while he's weakened. So I need to go home, Yowner. I'm still thinking, like there's 10 minutes, eight minutes left at this point in the game, right? Uh, he pops the rest off as anticipated. And I know that my move here is weaken him enough with the Mew that Haxorus could potentially break through him. Um, but I need to get that weaken first. So I pop off one Psy Shock. It gets into that HP. I'm like, okay, I just need to pop off another one and then I'll be in a good position. He sleep talks here, first turn of sleep. And unfortunately he gets the roar right away. And I'm like, come on, what can I do here? But let me pause for a second. Toys R Us comes in and I'm thinking, Five minutes left. I want to win this game not by timeout. Five or six minutes left at this point in the game. He has one more turn of sleep, but he's two hit KO'd by Outrage. So my thought process is he is going to clip, click Sleep Talk on me. And if I pop off an Outrage, it's possible that he either kills me with Scald or he roars me. And if he roars me into Blacephalon, I can sweep the rest of this game because I outspeed everything else and he would be low enough that I can kill him with Shadow Ball. I can win this game, win it. But here's the risk. <laughs> he could kill Toys R Us and potentially play me off in a situation if I didn't do enough damage where he tanks the Blacephalon, kills Blacephalon, I could lose this game. So it's a big gamble for me. So I, I've i vowed to make this decision. I say, I could lose myself the game here. I'm clicking Outrage because I want to see, I want this game to end and people hate me so much. I put him in range of what I think a Shadow Ball could potentially kill. He doesn't click Sleep Talk. So I get two Outrages off. I'm like, oh, if it's only two Outrages, I can switch into Tox Effects. I can win this game 4-0. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I do get the three turn Outrage. Once again, he lives on one from the Stealth Rocks. Unfortunate again, he pops off a Thunderbolt and he kills the Haxorus, but it doesn't matter guys, because you see what's happening in the background here at the amount of HP he's got left. Head Go Boom can come in, Head Go Boom can outspeed, Head Go Boom can pick up a kill, and Head Go Boom can finish this game off with a Scarfed Shadow Ball. So I did it. I did it guys. He needed to sleep talk and either kill the Haxorus or actually more importantly, he needed to try and go for the, the, the roar. I think I would have won anyway. He needed to roar me that turn and that roar needed to put me into uh, DMX if he wanted to have any chance of winning that game. Um, he even could have gone, roared me into Mew and he might have had a chance there also. So he didn't click it because he anticipated I was just going to safe switch into Toxapex to preserve the 4-0, but I outsmarted the situation, not him. I mean, he was making, he was making plays too. But when it comes down to it, guys, oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I was so happy at that point. I, I'm sure at some point I'll throw up on the screen what my reaction was in those circumstances, but I needed that, guys. I needed that so badly. I wanted it so badly. And it's pretty sad that even 
a replay of this, a post-com replay, is still 30 minutes. That was a 30-minute replay, guys. So you can imagine, being that the game was about 55 minutes, those turns were being pretty quick. Like, those weren't long turns. Neither of us were, I would say, like, stalling the game out. But he recognized that when I was struggling to kill the, um, the Suicune, it would have been unwise for him to try and make switches out. Uh, and so I respect that and I understand the decisions he was trying to make. And if he knew he was going to lose, it made more sense to lose 4-3 uh, than it did to potentially risk and go th lose 4-0 or 3-0. So he made the right moves. Um, I'm just... Guys, I was so happy. I was so happy, and I wish my reactions, because even though it was a long game, I really think the reactions in that last match were something I, I wanted to share with you guys, which is why I'm going to try and uh, splice them in here with a little bit of editing. Oh, man, I felt so good about that win, and it's good because San Francisco's claim, the Giantes claim their first win. We are now 1-2, uh, putting us, uh, I believe, in second place in the division since Chase already had one win and uh now has a worse record than me so we pick up that 3-0 i'm feeling good about that i really am and uh next week we are looking at going up against uh i believe uh lars and the barusha don fan um and he is a good opponent looking forward to playing against him uh we still have we're still on the chase of envy uh, trying to catch up to him who is currently number one in our division. So that's it guys Let me know how you think I did I broke through guys. That is the thing I broke through I was so happy at that moment. There was like a, a one in three chance that he Slept talk into the move that could have lost me the game by me making the play that I made um, and there's uh, Other chances that it, it couldn't have worked it wouldn't have worked out well for him, but in the end of the day I, I did what I needed to do. I set myself up in a position that I thought I could win, and I did win. And I'm so happy that it wasn't by timeout, even though there was only about not even five minutes left in the game at that point. So it did take me a while, but I did it. Leave me some love in the comment section down below. I need it, guys. I really need it this week. And uh, in general, life is very um, busy and very stressful for me right now. Um, I Work is tough uh, and I'm not going to get into it here because you guys aren't my therapist but it's very very hard at work I don't have a lot of time at home I haven't been doing things I love like playing video games because most of my time goes to work uh, my girlfriend or prepping for these games so <laughs> it's and prepping for draft format you guys know if you've played it at all it's a lot of work um, it's not always it doesn't always feel like fun games so that's the situation I'm in now so I need your love. I want your love in my comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys next week.